Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Since we're in the middle of October, I decided to do a movie review this week of a criminally underrated psychological thriller that came out on September 20th, 2002, called Detox, aka I See You in North America. It's a story about an FBI agent played by Sylvester Stallone who's tracking down a mysterious serial killer who's targeting police officers, including his partner and also going after his uh, girlfriend, soon to be wife. He became an alcoholic and suicidal that he wants up at a detox clinic outpost uh, during the middle of winter in somewhere in Wyoming. So that way, you know, he'll be able to get uh, physical therapy and he's joined by with uh, the entire gang of former police officers. Now this film had a troubled production. It was originally released by Universal Pictures. They, they filmed the film in the late 90s, like 1998, and finished it in 1999. But the studio had given it to all their test audience to see how it would perform, and they really hated it. So they tried to find a way to do some editing and change some of the parts that that hopefully this would sell well, but it couldn't. And because of that, the film had been on the shelves for three years before it got another distributor, a small productions distributor called DEJ Productions, and they gave it a limited release, seeing that Universal couldn't handle the film very well, although they have released it overseas under the original title Detox, but in North America, it's I See You. So it only got a limited release shown in selected cities somewhere around until it finally went straight to video on DVD, which has special features included like deleted scenes and a featurette with interviews of, of the supporting cast. Well, except for Stallone has a trailer included. It's now going to get a Blu-ray release by MBD Visual. Yeah, this is a company that they have put out uh, some MGM titles or or many independent films uh, on Blu-ray and DVD. It's a small video uh, company. Uh, it's actually going to come out sometime in January of next year. And it's going to port all the features from the previous DVD. And I think it's going to look uh, excellent in high definition. So it'll be nice to pick it up. Anyway, it, it stars Sylvester Stallone, Charles S. Dutton, who's been best known for films like uh, Rudy, he was in the TV show Rock. Yeah, he was also in Alien Free, Surviving the Game, uh, among others. Polly Walker. Chris Christopherson, you know, who's a who's a singer, but he's been in many movies in his entire career. Um, Christopher Filford, Jeffrey Wright, Tom Berenger, yeah, from films like uh, Platoon, uh, Major League, even the Sniper, come to mind. Stephen Lane, who was in Manhunter. I just previously reviewed uh, Another You, which he was in, and of course the TV show Terra Nova, he was in Avatar, all of those other films in his career. Robert Patrick, he yeah, had from Terminator 2, Judgment Day, where he played Team of Thousand, but he's been in other films too, as well, even the movie Bridge of Terabithia, the play the father in that film. Uh, many others. Robert Prosky, uh, Sean Patrick Flannery, Dina Meyer from Starship Troopers and Bats, and uh, Angela Abreto Rosa. It's written by uh, Harvard Swindow, that's based on his uh, novel Jitter Joint, um, which is a whole different adaptation 
compared to his novel. And it's directed by Jim Gillespie. For those who don't know, he directed I Know What You Did Last Summer, which is a movie that I hated. Yeah, it's a slasher, of, it's a horror slasher film, but it's a pretty dumb one, which has Jennifer Love Hewitt, Sarah Michelle Gellar, Freddie Prince Jr., and Ryan Phillippe, even the, um, and Haish. Yeah, and, and it got a sequel too. Unbelievable. The movie begins when we meet an FBI agent, Jake Malloyd, who's played by Sylvester Stallone, who's tracking down a mysterious serial killer who's targeting police officers, including his former partner who became a victim. Before that happened, uh, Malloy just went to a department store just to receive his gift for his soon-to-be fiance, Mary, played by Dina Meyer. It's an engagement ring. And not only that, but he went to a local bar just to meet with his police buddies, you know, chatting around, you know, drinking beer and you know, just having fun until he came back home late for dinner <laughs> and just started to go back to to Mary, just making love, uh, buys her a gift, which is a monkey <laughs> with symbols, but he also has the engagement ring gift, and you know, just making love and, and going back to bed. But meanwhile, his partner was completely murdered by the mysterious killer, who actually uh, talks in a, by using a disguise uh, voice box. And so that way we won't be able to hear what it, what the killer sounds like. Uh, he goes around taking a drill straight into the peephole and went straight into the victim's eye and shoots him and murders him by uh, tying him up onto the ceiling, you know, between his arms and legs, and puts in a a battering stick straight into his throat through his mouth. So the police arrive, including Malloy, only to receive a phone call from the killer, and it turns out that he went straight to his house, about to go after Mary, who just got out of the shower after hearing a doorbell and and dies exactly the same and then she got murdered the same way that his partner did. You know using the drill straight into her eye through the peephole of the door and then just goes in just just uh, shoots her murder her wrap her up put her on top of the ceiling in that another position it hangs her like that so that's when the Malloy along with the police officers, went to his place and he felt very shocked and emotional and very sad. Yeah, he actually broke down and cried to find out that his girlfriend, Mary, was murdered. But then they heard that the, the killer went straight into a facility and they all the cops had tracked him down. Lloyd suddenly uh, found, found out where the killer is at once he uh, wants up on top of the roof and then went all the way down and then he spotted the, what seems to be another police victim or possibility it might be him or it just could be a dummy that's set up like that and shot it and well either it was either him or maybe I mean he may have thought that maybe he either committed suicide or maybe this was just a setup. Three months later, ever since the death of Mary, he soon become suicidal and an alcoholic. And Mallory's best friend, who's a supervising officer, Agent Chuck Hendricks, played by Charles S. Dutton, you know, who was there for him you know, during the scene, he decided to enroll him into a rehab detox clinic in the outposts uh, somewhere in in a snowy uh, Wyoming. Yeah, it, it, it was dead of winter over there. And it's being run by 
It's a program for law enforcement officers that's being run by a former cop and recovering alcoholic, Dr. John Mitchell, played by Chris Christopherson. So Hendricks decided to stay in there just to make sure if he'll be alright. Uh, he joins in with several other officers who are patients in the clinic, including Peter Noah, played by Robert Patrick, who's an, an arrogant and paranoid ex-SWAT officer, along with Frank Slater, played by Christopher Philford, who's a cynical, opinated British police officer, Willie Jones, uh, played by Courtney B. Vance, who's a, a religious homicide detective, you know, he believes in Jesus. Uh, Jaroski, uh, who's played by Jeffrey Wright, who's an alcoholic narcotics cop who's, who's becoming more suicidal, you know, just like Malloy. Um, Lopez, played by Angela Alvaro Rosa, who's a, um, a foul mouth FPI. LAPD officer, and McKenzie, played by Robert Prosky, who's a uh, an alcoholic, uh, who's an elderly member of the Royal Canyon Mountain Police, who witnessed his partner's murder. So they join in with staff members, uh, including Doc's assistant and mechanic Hank, um, who's uh, who's played by Tom Berenger and a nurse named Jenny Monroe who's played by Polly Walker who's a psychiatrist which apparently uh, Malloy suddenly bonds with her for a while but then we have a blizzard that was happening in into the rehab uh, clinic with outside communications around that's when Jenny found the body of Connor, who's uh, played by Sean Patrick Flannery. Who's played by Sean Patrick Flannery? You know, he, he committed suicide by injecting himself with a drug. But Jenny believes that Connor would have had some help per se, because um, that's when uh, Malloy was trying to talk him, telling him about his problems. Of course, he did have a nightmare as well, you know, dreaming about uh, his wife, well, dreaming about his lover, Mary, and through those flashbacks, and then also dreams about that he was soon to be attacked by a serial killer that's inside the outpost. But it was a dream. So, somehow the killer arrives somewhere in the outpost going around killing many other patients around including the um, John Mitchell the doctor so he's going after everyone around yeah, Jack Bennett of course uh, joins in he was played by uh, Stephen Lane so everyone has either been hanged or or being axed straight to the head or or being hang or just being the electrocuted or here and there so it's like all all these patients are being killed one by one so it, it was up to Malloy to try to, to track down the killers somewhere around the outposts or outside of it while Hendrix is about to do some searching and try to discover what was happening around in Wyoming yeah, he was going to go back to the outpost to see how's he doing, but then he begins to spot um, like body, like he spotted a body of of a what seems to be another uh, patient into the uh, the thin ice. So then they begin, to, so he begins to find out that the killer might be around here somewhere. But anyway, Mal Malloy uh, joining in with. Um, with Jenny, well, well, he wanted Jenny to stay here, so in case, you know, nothing bad happens to her. But he's about to go try to find where the killer is at before he continues to kill more victims and so on and so forth, uh, here or there. 
I'm gonna leave it at that. I don't. I don't want to give away the plot too much or give away who the killer is, because I know they also try to suspect themselves to say which one is the killer and who's the one doing this. You know. Um. But I would definitely say it's a good thriller. It was indeed twisted, intense, um, disturbing, all in the mix for the film. Uh, but there could have been more gore. There should have been a lot of gore, actually. And even with the kills themselves, they could have been, you know, shot perfectly with every scene here and there. I mean, they got it there, but they just could have uh, added more to it. It could have been almost as grotesque as something like Seb. In a way, you know. Um, but that's in my opinion. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's it's a good thriller th that Stallone has ever done. I thought this was one of his underrated performances that he had in his career. Actually, a great performance, in my opinion. Because uh, he, he plays a different kind of agent that we've never seen him before, you know, especially in this situation of having to deal with a, a serial killer who's doing all these horrific murders. And he actually plays a game against him, you know, playing like a hide and seek type of game against him. And, you know, he also makes a phone call mentioning about, you know, I see you, but you don't see me. You know, so he's. Yeah, like he just goes around uh, taunting him, you know, and tricking him into every place that he goes so you never know where you'll see him. I mean, he even looked at one of the victim's eyes where it actually says, I see you on the eyelids in that one scene. Um, has a very great assembled cast joining in, even though you get what you... you got for this film alone that's like they're only there for like scenes after scenes where you basically know that they're gonna get killed anyway and yeah I mean it gets predictable yes that's true um, I mean it's interesting to see uh, Robert Patrick in a Stallone film joining in with Berenger and Chris Christopher's and even the Stephen Lane and Robert Prosky I mean Courtney B. Vance, I mean, wow, what a cast. I mean, who would have thought that they would have appeared in a Stallone film? So, yeah, it's amazing. Um, but it has some nice cinematography by Dean Simler. Uh, they have a score by John Perel, but joins in with other uh, scores around. So I don't think John Perel didn't do most of the film. Um, the problem with the film, however, though, was that the kills themselves weren't exactly as gory enough like they were hoping it would be. Um, you got the wrong director, Jim Gillespie. Yeah, he's the wrong choice. They could have had hired better directors who can definitely do this material right. And yeah, I could definitely see like maybe Wes Craven directing a movie like this, or or maybe anyone else. I mean, maybe Rennie Harlan, who actually worked with Stallone uh, ever since the film. A cliffhanger that would have been a better choice but I know he went on the direct a film called Driven yeah a racing car movie and that was not a good movie at all yeah, it tries to be like uh, something like <laughs> like Days of Thunder blend in with Fast and the Furious or something like that I mean yeah when it comes to that particular style of racing car movies but <laughs> this is no days of thunder. And I know Stallone did a racing car film before called Death Race uh, 2000. Yeah, but that was a uh, that was a uh, Roger Corman film though. Yeah, which is a a fun B movie flick. Yeah, the writing uh, could have been written better coming from Howard Swindell because he wrote the, the novel, so I guess he could have try to find a better way to handle the, the situation and, and the story very well. But on the other hand, I mean, he did what he could, though. I mean, to develop a, a, a psychological thriller. So, I mean, this might be the first time he ever did it. I mean, coming from his book. Um, of course, the killer, 
just uses the voice box as I mentioned um, so you don't often hear his voice very well until you begin to find out uh, in the twist yeah. later on when we begin to find out who the killer is but again I don't want to give it away um, but it does have a nice ending I mean I, I know they had the original ending from what I told but that was never included on the DVD but I don't know if it's ever been found but the ending was uh, reshot so that's where they have the ending uh, between the Malloy and the killer in that one scene yeah, when he finally found the killer he goes around uh, killing him straight inside the, uh, the cabin that's filled with all these uh, all these knives and daggers and even axes around well uh, Jenny is trying to try to hide away from the killer and I know Hendrix came by to you know trying to go after too as well but also try to see where they are where Malloy is yeah. um, even has a nice ending where he actually puts in the, the engagement brain onto the tree so be remembered by just when he was about to go back to the clinic you know Peter Noah you know, Robert Patrick you know he's always uh, coming up with all these crazy jokes he's like foaming in his mouth because you can tell how paranoid and arrogant he really is yeah he does act like an asshole but he faced his with uh, Malloy I mean that was really something like yeah Malloy just threatens him like if you ever talk shit about my wife I'll kill you <laughs> that sort of way but all of all I, I think it's a very underrated film I mean this is Stallone's uh, in my opinion, his great performance, next to all of his other films that he did, and great cast. I mean, given for what they're doing, um, I love love the setting here. It's all shot in a snowy blizzard. I mean, yes, you could tell how how eerie and cold, chilling that this film was going to go for for that vibe. Uh, even the opening started to feel more like uh, like. 7-esque type I mean I know they're trying to go for that like all movies were like they go for that MTV style editing here and there um, so but I guess for the most part the uh, the first act really worked and then the middle part of the act you know had some issues here and there with flaws and stuff but when we get to the final act that's where you know it's it's agent going after the killer and the final showdown. So there you go. Yeah, the movie didn't do very well at the box office, leaving that it only had a limited release by DEJ Productions. So, because they had a 55 million dollar budget for, for the movie, and I guess if um, if Universal really had handled this film very well, and they should have had, because it's obviously they they just couldn't, you know, leave this production behind. And it's just sad that the film got negative reviews from critics, yeah, of course, because they, they knew this was going to be bad. I mean, Stallone has been doing so many movies like this, and they're always being criticized or, or panned or anything. I mean, this is what happens when they had to give it to a small distributor who doesn't know how to handle a project like this, and, and they had to go straight to video so that way people can see it for themselves okay. but anyway but again the movie have horror elements here and there so I thought it really worked I also heard that Ron Howard was actually involved in the post production yes Ron Howard because he was one of the producers uh, trying to see how the movie was shot and see how it looks because they had to do some re-editing yeah, they had to do a lot of editing, and, and they changed the ending and all that. So, because they had to test it at the studio. The audience didn't like it, or they tried their best to fix it, to make it better, but no such luck. So that's why Universal just dumped it and just gave it to someone else to take over. So that's why. But what can you do? <laughs> yeah, what can you do? Anyway. So that's the movie Detox, uh, aka ICU, and I give the movie 
three and a half stars. So I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.